very early in the morning on the first day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Again, it's just telling us what happened there. And then the next reference is in Luke. Luke 23 verse 56 says they returned and they prepared spices and fragrant oils. They rested on the Sabbath day according to the commandments. So they prepared. That was the preparation day. They got everything ready. That's what we would call Friday. They, uh, they kept the Sabbath according, does he say the Jewish law? Luke was a Gentile. He says the, the Sabbath. He states it like every Christian will know about this. And he's writing this years after the crucifixion. He could have said the old Jewish Sabbath. He says according to the commandment, not the old commandment. It's all stated as though it's still in existence. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulcher, the tomb. Is there anything in here that says, and God established a new Sabbath day? So we're looking at all the references to the first day. We're looking for that commandment. I know one evangelist was very dramatic when he would preach on this subject. He would, you know, bring a thousand dollars and he'd put it up, uh, up front for everyone to see it. And he said, I'm going to give this away to anybody tonight that can show me this missing text in the Bible. What I want from you is to show me one commandment in the Bible to keep the first day as the new Christian Sabbath. Of course, everybody's very quiet because it's not there. And he always got to take his money home. So he was happy doing that. Yeah, no, you're just parroting A.T. Jones there, Doug, who, who had this whole thing. I could do that same thing. I've got $10,000 for any person that can show me one verse that says verbatim, go to church on Saturday. Oh, I'll get to always take my money home. Yeah, congrats. Again, Doug does not understand the new creation. So he appeals to a time in the old creation right before the new was inaugurated by Jesus' death. <laughs> this poses zero problems for the first day position. Completely consistent. That's what we would expect them to see in the old creation. Adventists love this verse, thinking it's a home run. When no, this was on the timeline of the old creation. With regards to Luke 23, preparation day started back in creation and was teaching us something. All throughout redemptive history, on preparation day, all necessary work was done ahead of time to enable worship on the Sabbath, like in Exodus 31. Same thing here in Luke 23. In the original creation week, God's preparations included preparing a home, Eden, and a community, Adam and Eve, in which to worship. Israel's preparation day, the disciples preparing the body, etc., was based on God's activities himself and pointed to Jesus. I mean, with the apostles, he's literally there. It, it, uh, he deliberately created Adam prior to those two preparations of preparing a home and community. Luke 24, 1 is another arguably first day Sabbath translation for the exact same reasons I talked about with, uh, earlier that, that Philip Kaiser explains. It's not just waxed over as Doug's portraying it here. And he's saying at the beginning of this, I'm going to try and deal with it. You're not dealing with anything. You're just citing the verse and then making assertions, just assuming all of your SDA presuppositions. And it all is rooted in you guys not understanding the day is a part of the ceremonial form. Days are not eternal. They appealed to people like the Puritans who claimed, for example, the Ten Commandments are eternal. Well, what did they mean by this? Well, they meant they're a reflection of who God is. They're the antithesis of him. He's not a liar, for example. He's not a thief. There's only one God, no idolatry, etc. Not that their days are eternal and the seventh day Sabbath was governing heaven and, and this expanse. But no, you're missing it. The substance of the fourth commandment is that the one true God after the first three commandments before it, because the first four are God facing, is that you're, you're not to worship any other God. You're to not worship him in a false way, the second commandment. You're not to do so by taking his name in vain, the third commandment. And you're to, to allot a portion of time out of your focuses to dedicate to him because he's worthy of it. That's the eternal aspect is that he's worthy of his image bearer's time. Not the seventh day. And yes, it does change. The form changes in scripture. I'm sorry, Adventists, it changes. Sorry. That's what happens in the second giving of the law. It's not rooted in creation. 
That's a part of the form of the command changing. The day is a part of the ceremonial form. And yes, Doug, Luke is documenting down history. So obviously he's going to state it as it was, Doug. <laughs> so if I were to document down church history from the 1200s, for example, and I were to, or to write it as it were back then, that means I'm saying it's still to be that way today? No. He's documenting history. He isn't editorializing. But again, did you catch the verbatim fallacy? That isn't an argument, Doug. No one's claiming, and then so therefore this is a new commandment. And you guys don't apply the same standard for the vast majority of your own teachings. Show us one verse verbatim that says investigative judgment or health reform. Show us one verse that says verbatim, go to church on Saturday. Not going to find it, so it must not be there, right? Of course, now all of a sudden you're going to appeal to looking at the whole of Scripture using inference and deduction, not the verbatim proof, proof text fallacy.